uh, Anne asked me to tell you, how did I learn about the truth about Scientology, right? Um, basically, first of all, the beginning crack in my Truman Show was my mom saying they're going to kill you and me going back on my medication, right? That was the first, like, I'm different than all these people, right? But then it went, I went along with it for a long time until I got onto their top level, which Tom Cruise supposedly just finished, um, which is called OT7. Now, OT3, I should back up, because this is a story. Have any of you heard of the space aliens? Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. And it's kind of, when you hear it this way, it is, it's hard to believe, and it's hard for me to even tell it to you because it's so wacky. But here's what it is. First of all, you, ha you, it's very, you have to be invited onto the level. You have to spend a lot of money getting cleaned up so you're right for the level and security checked and all these things, right, so that you're ready for it. So by the time you're there, you're, you're in the right frame of mind. Now, for me, I got on OT3 in 1979, and at the time, now they have a big course for it, but at the time, they just gave you a pack, and you opened it up. It's on xenu.net, which is my friend in Norway, his website. He's got it there, and you can read the whole thing, because I'm just going to tell you a little bit of it. But basically, and it's going to sound really wacky, and you have to remember, Hubbard was a science fiction writer, okay? So that's what this is based on. But I didn't, at the time, you open up the pack, and it says, you know, first of all, and I should warn each of you ahead of time, because uh, I was in a church and a Baptist minister did the same. He was telling about Scientology, and he said, I want to warn you all, Hubbard said you could get pneumonia if I tell you this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you all want to leave, you can. So I've given you the inoculation on that. So this is the same kind of thing. Hubbard said he nearly died doing the research on this. But he, because of us, he fought through it and he, he figured it out. Now, that sounds pretty right away. You're like, oh, God, come on. But at the time, you have to remember, I'd been working up this ladder trying to handle epilepsy. And so, and it wasn't working on anything. So maybe this is it, right? If he nearly died, that's kind of right around when I was looking at the Eastern religions. That's when I had the first seizure. So I thought, maybe that's it. I was getting into the higher realms of spirituality and had a seizure. And doctors don't know what causes seizures anyway, right? So I thought, maybe this is it. So here it goes. 75 million years ago, there was this really evil warlord on another planet called Xenu. And that word itself costs about $50,000 to hear. So you can leave the checks at the back. <laughs> Just kidding. So Xenu, because of overpopulation, and pardon me if I forget it or get it mixed up, you can go onto Xenu.net and read it, the whole thing written out in uh, Hubbard's handwriting, so you can read the whole thing. But anyway, Xenu basically was trying to handle overpopulation, so he took all these people, flew them in DC-8s, which we're supposed to believe they had DC-8s back then, 75 million years ago. He flew them in DC-8s <laughs> over to these volcanoes around Earth and blew them up, right? And they all blew up. And then they, all their spirits connected onto these ribbons, these electronic ribbons, and then they flew the ribbons into these theaters. And in the theaters, they implanted you with all these pictures of God, Jesus. I don't think he says God, but he says Jesus, church, angels, you know, all kinds of different things, roller coasters, amusement parks. You know, he just has all these things that are part of the OT3 incident. And now you are all covered with these, they, they call them body thetans, right? They're beings that died back then, and now they connected onto all of us, and we're connected to these, to these beings. I mean, to, they're connected to us, and we have to get rid of them. And you have to go in session and get rid of them. And yet, I mean, that's pretty wacky, isn't it? So there's body thetans, and then there's clusters, which are groups of people that all group together. And you have to get rid of them. And they have all kinds of different processes to get rid of these body thetans. So for me, I was like, wow, that must be what's wrong with me. Right? And, and everyone I know who's out says they had the same thing on their problem. Whatever, you know, we all have little problems, right? But whatever it is that you can't fix, now it's like, it's the BTs and clusters that are connected to me. So you have to go in session. You've all heard of the E-meter? Yes? Well, the E-meter is like a lie detector that Hubbard invented that basically, it, 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 he said it, it registers electrical charge, charge that you have image pictures. Remember he said you have the mental image pictures in the reactive mind? Remember that? Of pain and unconsciousness and stuff. So 
there's charge in them. It's actually electrical charge. And that's why you see them around doing those pinch tests, or now they do the stress test. You've seen them, don't they have that here? They do that where you, you see Scientology and they've got the little meter out and they're doing the stress test. It used to be a pinch test, but that kind of got old and stress is a big thing for all of us now, so now they've changed it to the stress test. But it's basically a way to show that you have charge and you can recall it. That's basically what it is. So you go in session and you have to, this is my interpretation of it totally. It may not be theirs or anybody else's, but mine is that I don't really believe I'm covered in BTs or clusters at all. And finally, after seven years, it took me seven years of fighting this, but I finally realized I would write up to David Miscavige and say, this doesn't work. And that was the beginning of my waking up. I wrote him and I said, I feel like a being trapped inside of an iceberg as big as the Grand Canyon, and I'm using a toothpick to try to get out. You know what I mean? It's like it doesn't work, right? Which is a mortal sin in Scientology, even though they don't have sins. But, you know, it's like you can't, because <laughs> they don't believe in anything. But, you know, you can't really disagree. But I did. Every time I'd go, I'd just say, this doesn't work. You know, and then they'd send me to correction and da-da-da and clear all these words and spend thousands of dollars. And I'd finally go, okay, fine, I'll try it again. And I tried it for seven years. Now, during that seven years, the other thing that happened, that, during that seven years, another thing that happened to me is I had massive migraine headaches, right? Massive for 10 years. And in Scientology, you can't take aspirin if you're on auditing lines. So I'd just be dead. I mean, you'd find me three days out of a month, I'd be boiling in a bathtub, and then I'd put ice around my head and sleep. And I was like, have you ever seen those old movies of the ladies with the diphtheria and they finally come out of it? Remember that? That's kind of how I was. I'd finally come out of it, I'd be better. It was horrible. It was just like torture. And so finally a lady who, in Scientology, was an internal medicine doctor, and she said, I think you just need estrogen and progesterone. I think that's all it is. So I went to my doctor, I got it, that was the last migraine headache I had. But the neat thing that had happened during that time is I started looking into self-improvement books, which is sort of against the law in Scientology because they only want you to use Scientology. But I didn't care. I was in too much pain, it, was too, it wasn't working, I knew it wasn't working for me. I thought maybe it's working for everyone else in this room, but it's not for me, right? And so I had to, you know, there's a survival instinct and it was like, I gotta handle me. So I started, I, I mean, I'd be in bookstores, you know, like sneaking around. You know what I mean, like reading these books, you know. You know, it's really funny because it was like, I have, my husband used to call it my secret library because it was all these books on, you know, you, all the books you've heard of on self-improvement or whatever. And I was like, but what happened on reading these is I started thinking, these people aren't all bad. They got some great information here, right? So that helped me wake up. 